Hey y'all and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. Today we're going to be doing a full face of Youngblood Mineral Cosmetics. So I'm just going to kind of take you through um, some products that I've really been enjoying and also just give you some insight into the ingredients, um, the prices of their products. This is a more pricey brand uh, their products are definitely up there so um, I think just kind of really delving into the products looking at uh, the quality and how well they perform as well as the ingredients can kind of give you a sense of if these are worth the higher price tag they are cruelty free and they're cruelty free certified by PETA um, and then I think for the most part their products are vegan um, when I was looking into the ingredients of the products that I have, I did not see any animal derived ingredients, but I'm not sure if the entire brand is vegan, but they are cruelty free and I do have a lot to say about the ingredients. So definitely watch the entire video because um, I will go into each product uh, and go through the ingredients and tell you ones that I'm, you know, I think are great and ones that I don't think are that great. So that's what we're doing today. I'm going to try and be as uh, thorough as possible. I do have quite a few products. I really focused the majority of kind of the ingredients on the face products because I feel like that's covering a larger surface area and I feel like that's where I tend to be the more, most strict when it comes to ingredients. So foundation, concealer, primer, um, bronzer, blush, all of that, I tend to be a little bit more strict. So I go into a little bit more detail in those products. Um, and then the eye products and lips, I don't go into too much detail just because this video would be so incredibly long. But I did try and give you as much information as possible. And then of course, if you have any additional questions, you can definitely leave them down below. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the video. Grab yourself something to drink, grab a snack. This could be a lengthy video. So make sure you have something to enjoy while you watch. I've got a big glass of iced coffee and we're going to go ahead and get into it. All right, so I have a two, two of their, I guess like skincare products. Um, so I'm gonna prep my skin with both of these. Uh, the first is the Eye Impact Quick Recovery Eye Cream. Now, as you can see from the packaging, I've used quite a bit of this. I've been using this just in my kind of everyday skincare routine. Um, so I'm gonna give you a little bit of information on it. This is a very pricey product, so I will not repurchase this, but I've just been using it since I have it. Uh, this retails for $60 and you get half an ounce. Uh, it's supposed to be cooling, calm puffiness, and brighten dark circles. Uh, the first ingredient is water. It also has glycerin, shea butter, honeysuckle extract, algae extract, grapefruit peel oil, hyaluronic acid, silica, mica, jojoba seed oil, coffee seed extract, uh, which is actually about halfway down the list so it's not really high on the list um, but it is in there and then biotin cucumber so those are all the ingredients that really stood out to me to be very beneficial and effective ingredients some ingredients that i wasn't a huge fan of are retinol palmitate which i believe is a uh, like a vitamin a or kind of a, a retinol uh, i don't know if it's like a combination of retinol and something else um, but that can be quite irritating to the skin, especially if you're, if you're going to be wearing this during the day and you go out in the sun. That can be very, very irritating to the skin. It also contains dimethicone, citric acid, phenoxyethanol, which I'm okay with. It is a commonly used preservative. Um, and then it also has limonene and lim linolul, which from what I understand are fragrance ingredients. So not the cleanest product, uh, but as you can see, I have been using it. I will say... I actually really like this eye cream. Um, it's very, very cooling on the under eye. And it kind of has this like minty sensation. Um, it just feels really nice on the under eyes. Again, I'm not going to purchase this when I run out, but I've just been using it. And uh, when it comes to skincare, I really try and keep my products the ingredients, I really want the, the ingredients to be as good as possible. Makeup, I'm a little bit more forgiving, but when it comes to skincare, 
Um, I really want the products to have really, really good ingredients. And some of the ingredients that are in here are just not ones that I want to be putting on my skin all the time. So um, I've just been kind of using this off and on for the past few months. How long? When did they give this to me? It's been a while. Um, and I enjoy it. Again, I won't repurchase. And then the next prep step that I have, uh, this product I love. This is their Illuminator with Diamond Powder. Um, this was one of the first products that they ever sent to me. Uh, this retails for $43. You get one ounce. The first ingredient is water, but it also contains olive fruit, glycerin, shea butter, orange peel oil, which you can really smell. It definitely has like a citrusy kind of orange scent. It's very light, but it is there. Sea buckthorn and diamond powder. Some ingredients that stood out to me that I wasn't a huge fan of were PEG 100, tetrasodium IDTA, dimethicone, uh, which in makeup products, I don't I, I don't really fuss over. I don't like silicones in my skincare products. Um, and this is kind of a hybrid. You can use this with your skincare and your makeup. Um, it has sterile alcohol and ethyl hex ethyl hexyl palmitate, which I flagged because uh, the particular, I guess this ingredient, they actually call it out that it is derived from coconuts. So that is something to be wary of if you are uh, sensitive to coconut, like myself. But this is a gorgeous product. I'm going to show you what it looks like. It just comes out like a moisturizer, like a cream. And it has this really pretty gold reflect to it. So um, I've used this before um, on Instagram and I think here on my YouTube channel. But I'm just going to focus this kind of on the high points of the face. You can mix this in with your foundation, mix it in with a moisturizer. Um, it's not chunky glitter. It's not like a metallic highlighter. It's definitely more of a natural highlight. So I think if you really like a glowy base, you could just kind of go over, go over your entire face. But because I am sensitive to coconut oil, I just like to concentrate this uh, around the perimeter of my face. And it really does give the skin a pretty glow. I've mixed it in with products before and I like that as well. So, And it's really nice. It's actually a very moisturizing product. It's not uh, just an illuminator. I find that it actually does moisturize the skin. So you could use this as a moisturizer and an illuminator. Again, just kind of take into consideration the ingredients that are in these products. As with everything that I talk about today, I am going to be calling out certain ingredients, both good and maybe not so good. So, you know, just kind of take that into consideration when looking into these products if you are wanting to try some of them. So the next product that I have to talk about is the Mineral Radiance Moisture Tint. And I'm going to say right off the bat, this is probably my favorite. Well, this is my favorite product. I don't know. There's another product that I really, really love. But this is, I think this is my favorite product I've tried from Youngblood. It's supposed to be a tinted moisturizer, but I find this is actually performs more like a foundation in terms of the coverage. So this retails for $49. You get, how much product do you get? You get one ounce, which is standard. There are only five shades. I have the first two lightest shades, so I have nude and natural, and I will swatch those for you. Uh, the first ingredient is water. This is an oil-free formula, and there are no coconut-derived ingredients. Uh, it is supposed to have a sheer, luminous, sheer coverage, luminous finish. Again, I would say this is like a light to medium coverage, and I would definitely agree with the more luminous kind of dewy finish. Um, in terms of ingredients, there is fragrance in this product. So I reached out to the brand to find out what the fragrance consisted of, what it like what it was. So I said, hi there, what is the fragrance that you use in your mineral moisture tint? Uh, they said, thanks for reaching out. It's Youngblood's signature citrus scent and in parentheses they put orange. So um, I asked them again just to kind of clarify if this is from essential oils because I know that they used orange peel oil in here. Um, or if this was a synthetic fragrance um, and they have not responded to me yet. So I'm still waiting on that. By the time that I upload this, if I have found an answer, I will put it here on the screen. Uh, some other ingredients that were a little iffy, uh, dimethicone, just calling that out in case you don't like to use dimethicone in your products. There are PEGs, silica, which is not a big deal. Uh, Diso, well, in my opinion, it's not. 
disodium EDTA and phenoxyethanol, which again is a very commonly used preservative. I don't have an issue with it, but I know some people don't prefer to have it in their products. Uh, some ingredients I thought were kind of cool. It has licorice root extract, kiwi extract, sodium hyaluronate, which is hyaluronic acid, glycerin, and something called saccharina, which I tried to look it up, and from what I understand, I think it's seaweed, but I could be totally wrong about that. Anyway, it was just an ingredient that I'd never heard of. Again, I have the shades Nude and Natural. All right, so this is the shade Nude. This is the shade Natural. Uh, I will say their shades do run dark, so if you have very, very fair skin, um, you may not be able to find a shade for you, and if you have very, very deep skin, or even just tan skin um i don't i don't have all the shades so i don't know how dark it runs but i was looking on the website the shade range is abysmal uh definitely needs to be updated i think that's my biggest critique of this product is the shade range but i'm gonna go ahead and use the shade nude today because i am quite fair at the moment and i'm also going to use their brush um now this is not a new brush to my channel i use this all the time this is their yb3 they make fantastic vegan brushes they're great so i'm just going to dip right into the moisture tint and this shade is actually a little bit dark for me it's also a little bit more on the yellow side um, but it does work and if i just kind of use a very sheer layer it doesn't look overly dark but yeah shade range definitely needs a lot of work but other than that, this product is gorgeous. It wears very, very well. It looks beautiful on the skin, applies really nicely. Again, you get that, you can definitely build it up to a light, like a high light coverage. And it has such a pretty dewy finish, but not oily, not overly dewy, um, definitely more dewy. And especially with that illuminator that I applied underneath, my skin is going to look even more kind of shiny. All right, so that is uh, a good solid layer of this product. As you can see, I mean, in my opinion, I think it looks really nice on the skin. This is definitely my kind of coverage and finish. Um, and this is a product that I would purchase myself. Um, it is a little bit pricey. I mean, I say a little bit, it's pretty pricey. It's uh, $50 for one ounce, so that is up there. They also have, um, powder foundations, like these little loose powder. They sent me a bunch of uh, small sizes of a bunch of the shades. I'm not going to use that today, but that is something to keep in mind if uh, you like powder foundations. Uh, they do have powder foundation as, a, as well, and I think the shade range is a lot better as well. So that is an option. Um, I also want to mention they do have this brush. It's the YB6. It's more of kind of that flat top buffing brush. I prefer the YB3, but I like the YB6. I just, if I think if you're wanting to choose between the two, I prefer YB6. I think it gives a smoother application and um, it doesn't appear so streaky when you're using cream or liquid products, but I like both of them. Honestly, their brushes are fantastic. They're pretty pricey, um, but I think they're good products to invest in. I think if you just take care of your brushes, wash them frequently, um, you should be able to use them for a long time. All right, so I also have their concealer. It's not the duo pan one. They also have a like a dual one. I think it's more of a correcting concealer, but I just have their regular like full pan concealer. Uh, this retails for $33 and you get 0.1 ounces. Uh, there are eight shades. I have three of them, so I'll swatch all of them for you. Um, I have the shades Fair, Medium, and Medium Warm. The first ingredient in these is caprylic triglyceride, which does contain coconut. Um, from my understanding, it's coconut oil and glycerin. Um, this is supposed to be light reflecting, packed with vitamins, hydrating, and it has environmental pollution protection. Uh, some ingredients I thought were interesting were uh, jojoba seed oil, honeysuckle flower, flower extract, and jojoba esters. Uh, I also wanted to call out that this has two different types of waxes. It has candelilla wax and carnauba wax. Um, so just something to keep in mind. Some people don't like waxes in their cream products. So one thing I will say about the moisture tint, I think it runs dark. But the concealers, I actually think the opposite. I think they run light. So I have fair, medium, and medium warm and they are quite light on me. Like medium, that does not look very 
medium to me. Um, they run very, very light and there's only eight shades. So I'm gonna take a mixture of medium and medium warm because fair is way too light. So I'm gonna first go in with medium, so as you can see, it's a very brightening concealer. And just for me and my preference, I like a concealer that matches my skin tone. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of that and then I'm gonna go in with medium warm. And this one is also really yellow. And then I'm just gonna blend this in. Now this product, I don't have a ton of experience with. I have not been using this as much as the other products. Um, it's very, very, very creamy and emollient. When you, the minute you stick your finger in the pot, it starts to kind of melt down. Um, so it's really easy to blend out. It's not too thick. I think the coverage is okay. It's, I mean, to me, this is about light coverage. And I prefer a concealer that's going to do a little bit more and have a little bit more coverage. And I think I just haven't been reaching for this because the shade is just not my preference. But it's not that it's a bad concealer. It has a nice kind of more luminous finish. Um, so I kind of agree with that light reflecting quality. Um, yeah, but it's, it's a nice concealer. Again, this is not one that I have a ton of experience with, but it's definitely not, not my favorite. I prefer, if you were wanting a potted concealer, I would definitely go for the Ara Perez Arnica concealer. You're gonna get more coverage, and I just like the ingredients better. Um, but yeah, so yeah, just not a favorite. Doesn't have enough coverage for me, but you know, for those of you who don't like a lot of coverage, you just want something really thin, lightweight, um, this may be a good option for you. This next product is, I think, my second favorite product next to the moisture tint, and that is their Mineral Rice Setting Powder. Now, I have definitely raved about this powder. I love this powder. It sets cream products so well. I think my one issue with this, it can look really heavy if you apply too much, but if you just apply the right amount, it's gorgeous. So this retails for $26. There's three shades. I use the lightest shade, which is light. Uh, this contains mica, cornstarch, hydrated silica, parsley extract, cucumber extract, lemon peel, jojoba oil, honeysuckle flower extract, and marshmallow. Um, there were no ingredients in here that stood out to me as, you know, like ingredients that I would flag. So I actually really like the ingredients in this powder. There's no talc. There's actually no talc in any of their powder products. Um, so I am going to take this on the YB5, which I, is another brush that I always use. This is such a nice under eye setting brush. Um, it's very, very similar to the Real Techniques contour brush. So if you have that, you don't necessarily need this brush, um, but this is a really nice one. So I'm gonna take a tiny bit of this powder and I'm gonna use this brush to set my under eye and my T-zone. Um, but I think my biggest thing with this powder is just using the tiniest bit because I have applied too much of this and it definitely looks heavy and very powdery on the skin. So I just wanna go in with a very light layer. It's a little bit of a heavier powder. It's not quite as finely milled as like my RMS powder or any of my other silica powders. This one's definitely a little bit heavier and a larger grain size. I don't know what you call it, particle size. All right, and then for the rest of the face, I'm gonna go in with a larger brush. And just pat that just the tiniest bit. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do my brows. I have this Brow Artiste palette, um, and it looks like this. I have not been using this. I tried this once, and uh, I don't use this ever because it's a little too red and warm for me. So uh, I think with this product, I just need a different shade. So you get two powders and a wax. I'm gonna go ahead and use it today. But yeah, it's definitely not my preferred shade. I like something a little bit more ashy and kind of taupey, almost borderline gray. Like sometimes I'll just use a gray eyeshadow in my brows. So I'm gonna take this lightest shade right here. 
and it does come with a brush and it also comes with tweezers which i think is really cool and it's a nice very sleek palette i think if you can just find a shade that works for you um, i think this is a great palette i love brow palettes i love having options for the brows so i like the concept it's just the shade does not work the greatest for uh, just what I prefer. All right, so other than the shade not being right, I actually like these powders a lot. I love the applicator that it comes with. This is actually a really nice applicator. Um, but to offset a little bit of this redness going on, I'm gonna take my e.l.f. Wow Brow. This is a very taupey kind of cool toned gray shade. I'm gonna run this through my brows. All right, so I'm gonna finish off the rest of the skin and then we'll move on to the eyes. So um, I've used several of these products already on my camera, or on my camera, on my channel, so you've seen them before. Um, I'm gonna do a little bit of highlight and for that I'm gonna use the Mineral Radiance in the shade Sundance. This is marketed as a bronzer, blush, and highlight. So this retails for $46. You get 0.34 ounces. Uh, there are three shades, and again, this is a talc-free formula. So I'm actually gonna take the YB7, which I think is supposed to be like their highlighter brush, and I'm gonna dip into this, this color right here and then this middle shade right here. There's quite a bit of kick up. And this brush is a little small for me for highlight, but I kind of just want to try it. And this formula is very, very soft. So I actually really like this a lot. There's just a lot of kick up, so just something to be aware of. And the highlight is also a little bit more on the soft side. It's definitely more natural. But that's what I prefer, so I actually like this a lot. So for bronzer, I'm going to use their Defining Bronzer, and I use the shade Soleil. It looks like this. I did not include this in my bronzer video because this is such a new product to me, and I just, I didn't have, at the time, I didn't have my thoughts about it. Um, but this retails for $43. There are four shades, uh, which is not that great, but it's better than uh, some other brands, and uh, there's no talc in here as well. So I'm going to go ahead and just bronze up my skin. This is definitely more of a, here I'll swatch it for you, definitely more of a kind of brown undertone. So it's a little bit more on the neutral side. It's not too cool, not too warm. So I think this would be great as a contour. I'm going to use it as a bronzer today, but I actually quite enjoy the undertone of this. It reminds me of the 100% pure cocoa bronzer um, I cannot remember the shade that I use, but the undertone, that's what it reminds me of. It's a very, very brown, kind of chocolatey undertone. All right, and then for blush, I have one of their uh, loose blushes. Um, so this is their Crushed Mineral Blush. Uh, these retail for $24. I have the shade Sherbet, and there are four shades, and again, no talc. So my biggest issue with this product is the packaging. So I don't know if y'all can see that. It's got a sifter, but there's no edge to the sifter. So whatever you dump out, there's no way to put it back in the pot because it's just, I don't even know how to describe it. There's no edge. There's, no, um, there's nothing to keep the product in the pot. So that's my biggest issue with this product. Um, this is also a very shimmery bronzer, but I actually like the color. It's kind of a... All right, so there's the bronzer I just used, and then there's the blush. Very, 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 very shimmery. So uh, I have to use a light hand with this. This I would describe as like almost like a blush topper or even a highlighter if you have a deeper complexion because it's so shimmery. If you want to use this as a blush, I would just forego highlighter altogether and just use this all across the cheek area because it's going to give you plenty of glow. You don't need another highlighter on top of this. All right, so for the eyes, I do have one of their eyeshadow quads. Uh, these are their pressed mineral eyeshadow quads, and I have the shade Vintage. Of course, I went for purple because purple is my favorite color. 
and uh, I really it's hard to find good purple eyeshadows um, so I really wanted to test this out and see how it performed so this retails for $46 which is very pricey that's over $10 per shadow and they are small pans um, there's no talc in this formula and there are seven different shades of this quad so I think there's like a green one there's a bronzy one uh, there's just kind of a little bit of everything but of course I went with purple so that's what we're going to use today I actually uh, I've only swatched this I've never actually used this on my eyes so this is a bit of a first impressions today and we're just going to find out how this guy goes I'm first going to go into this shade which is called Syrah and I'm going to take this all through my crease and down onto my lid and I don't have anything on my eyes I don't have a primer or um, concealer or foundation blends out really nice it, it looks very very light in the pan like it almost looks like it's not going to show up but it's definitely there that's really pretty so here's what all four shades look like um, it's an all matte palette. There's nothing shimmery in here. I'm actually going to take that same shade and run that along my lower lash line. All right, I'm going to take a little bit of this shade, which is called Blush. And I'm going to use that right on the very outer edge of that Syrah shade that I just applied. I'm going to take a tiny bit of that on the lower lash line as well. All right, so I'm gonna play with, I'm gonna try and use all of these shades. So now I'm gonna go into the shade Merlot. And this, I'm actually taking on a YB10 brush. I think this is their concealer brush, but I'm gonna use it on the eyes. And I'm gonna place this just right on this outer corner. And I'm also gonna take a little bit of this right on the outer corner of my lower lash line and just connect that up. So I'm creating a little bit of this kind of v-shape on the outer part of my eye and then i'm going to go back in with that blending brush and just soften that up all right so these blended out really nicely there's not too much there's no fallout um there's not like hardly any kick up in the pan and they're just blending out like butter I really really like this. I have it's looking a little choppy right here. I went a little heavy-handed on this side. So I'm just taking a little bit of Syrah. Just blending that out. But other than that, these look great. I kind of wish there was a shimmery shade in here. Just a little sparkle or something. Alright, so I'm gonna go back into this Sundance palette and I'm gonna take the middle shade with my finger and I'm just going to pat that on the center of my lid and then just buff that out just for a little bit of shine Oops. all right and before I curl my or uh, apply mascara I was almost about to apply mascara I'm going to take the shade Bordeaux, which is this one right here. I forgot to use this shade. I'm going to take a tiny bit of that on an angled brush, and I'm just going to concentrate this right along the lash line. I don't want my eye to look too deep, but I'm just going to define the lash line a little bit. All right, so now we can go in with the mascara. This is their Outrageous Lashes Mineral Lengthening Mascara. They do have another mascara that's a volumizing one, but I liked the brush on this one a little better. It's a standard bristle brush, but it's definitely more skinny. Um, now, I did use this in my uh, IG stories a few days ago, and I really liked it. It's definitely more of a natural lengthening and separating mascara, which is what it claims to be. Love the brush. You can really get in there and get every lash. And I think it looks really nice. Now this is a non-waterproof mascara, so it's going to make my curl fall, which is typical with any mascara that's not waterproof, so I don't fault the mascara for that at all. So while that dries, I'm going to go ahead and take their lip liner. This I use all the time. This is probably my third favorite product. 
uh, it applies super creamy, wears very well, and I like this color. It's more of a brownie nude. So this is the shade Eau Naturelle. This is their lip liner pencil. Looks like that. Kind of a warm brownie nude, which is what I tend to gravitate towards. All right, and then for the lips, I have quite a few options. Um, they sent me one of their lipsticks in the shade Smolder, which I don't think really goes with this eye look, um, but they have they do have regular lipsticks, and then they have their liquid lips, which I think these are relatively new to the brand, and I think I have all the shades. So I'm gonna use one of these today. Um, the shades are really cool too, like this shade, Euphoria, is probably my favorite. It's that really pretty, like, orangey shade. It reminds me a lot of Freckle Fiesta, I think is what it's called, by Fenty. All right, so this is all the shades from top to bottom. I have Cashmere, Chic, Velvet Dream, uh, La Dolce Vita, Euphoria, and Iconic. Sorry, that was really hard to read. <laughs> so that's what they all look like. Really, really pretty, very opaque pigmented shades. These remind me so much of the Honest Beauty liquid lips. So if you ever tried those, they don't dry down completely matte, but they, they dry down matte, but they will transfer. Um, and they do move around a little bit, but they're very comfortable to wear. In my opinion, I would rather have something transfer and move around a little bit and it not suck the life out of my lips. So I actually really like the formula of this. So I'm gonna try, I'm gonna go in with cashmere first. And um, they smell like cake, like birthday cake. They remind me of the Persona glosses if you've tried those as well. So I'm gonna go in with what did I say? Cashmere first. And it is a very thin formula, so it's really easy to spread around. They're extremely opaque on first application, so you're not having to really build it up. Um, I'm also going to take the shade Chic and add a little bit of that. This one's a little bit more mauve -y. Yeah, really beautiful formula, very comfortable, very easy to wear, very easy to apply. Um, so I have nothing bad to say about these. I like these a lot. They smell really good. Um, again, they kind of have that like birthday cake smell. So really enjoy this. And actually this little color combination looks really nice with this eye look. All right guys, so that completes this video. I hope this was helpful and just gave you some more information on the brand maybe helped you decide if you want to use these products or want to try them out. If you have any further questions, please let me know in the comments below. I'd be more than happy to help you out. I hope you enjoyed as always. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, remember, I love you, God loves you, and I'll see y'all in my next video. Bye guys.